Hello and welcome to a little bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic where I'm going to take a look at a puzzle that's been created on LinkedIn by my friend Thomas Snyder, three-time World Sudoku champion, former World Puzzle champion, um, somebody you know I've, I've, I've met over the years normally at Puzzle Championships. Um, I've always been so impressed with him, just, just a, a genuine genius. Um, and a very nice guy as well. So um, anyway, he invented this game Queens, which is a play on Star Battle. It's a bit like Star Battle with one star um, in each region. And uh, I saw the other day he posted something on LinkedIn to, this, to the effect that I think 100,000 people are playing this daily, which is phenomenal. It is, it is, I suppose, a bit like Wordle. It's become incredibly popular and I really like doing them. And I think anyone who enjoys watching Cracking the Cryptic would enjoy these puzzles. So I definitely commend them to you. And the way they work is Monday is the easiest day. We work right the way through the week until we get to Sunday, which is the hardest day. So I thought I might have a look at today's puzzle. I won't race on it, which is I normally do like to race because um, LinkedIn's been become quite clever about it. And it now tells you, it sort of says you beat 95% of CEOs and things like that. You were in the top X percent of players. Um, so there is there is a competitive element, um, but I won't do that today. I'll just I'll just try and talk the logic, talk through the logic as I see it in case you're not used to Queens. Um, so let's start the game. Have I got I've got this roughly in the right place, haven't I? It's not it's not ideal, but it's OK. Um, so this is meant to be the hardest puzzle of the week. And what we have to do is to put one queen in every region, in every row and in every column. And queens cannot touch each other even diagonally. So immediately this square, for example, if you were to put a queen here, I have to do oh, normally have to double click. There you go. You can see you couldn't now put a, a queen in the purple area. So that's not going to be valid. Now, some tips about the way I do these puzzles, which might not be the way most people do them. I try and look at the geometry of the shapes quite a lot. So there's an obvious piece of geometry regard. Oh, this is 10 by 10, probably is uh, three, four, five. No, it's nine by nine. Okay, okay. Sudoku size. Um, I wonder if they're all Sudoku size, I'm not sure. Um, but you can see in column nine, only the orange shape can have a queen in it. There are no other shapes that go into column nine. So the queen in column nine must be an orange and therefore all, oh, whoopsie, all of the other cells of orange, we could effectively X in like this. Now this is my only, um, on, on the browser I use for LinkedIn, it's t it takes ages. There's a lag and there's a sort of input lag between when you, when you press a button and, um, and when it registers, and that, that really bugs me if you're trying to do it quickly. But you can see this square, if this was a queen, you couldn't put anything in this light gray area. If this was a queen, you couldn't put anything in the red area. Indeed, in this square, you couldn't put anything in the yellow area. You see the input like there? I pressed that and about two seconds later, the X popped up. Naughty thing. But we can combine logic like that. For example, what about the bottom two rows? In the bottom two rows, there's going to be a queen in purple. There's going to be a queen in dark gray. That's the two queens for those two rows, isn't it? So how could there possibly be a queen in yellow in the bottom two rows or indeed in the bottom of orange? There cannot be. And similarly, look at the first three columns. Purple. Is that pink? <laughs> purple, pink and light gray are going to have queens in them. There will be one queen in each of those regions. That's three queens. How many queens are there going to be in the first three columns? Three. So we can immediately enter those in. And now all of a sudden we get our first queen because now in, in dark gray, the queen is locked into one of four cells. I don't know which, which cell it's in, but now this must be the only place, or this can be the only place we can put the queen into purple now. And I am somebody who, oh, look at this, but lags terrible again. I, I will now sort of, um, you know, fill in the rest of the column. Some people um, will be very much more proficient than I am at sort of just not using the X's, but I've got used to using them and it, it slows me up a bit, but oh, look, that one's the same. Um, right, so there's something clearly quite strange going on uh, in the top three rows now. So this, this puzzle seems to be about thinking of, you know, rows and columns 
as units because in the top three rows we could put something in orange couldn't we in fact you can see in row one there's actually only one space left for a queen um, in column in sorry in row two and row three we could put a queen in pink and we could put a queen in blue but there's no other shapes entering rows one and two so there must be a queen in pink and now one of these one either this square or this square in blue will contain a queen so this can't be a queen I don't think that's going to be important but it's it's that sort of logic that might be important in a harder puzzle now where's the queen in column eight it's in red somewhere isn't it so we can't repeat one in red and now where's the queen in column seven it must be here so that gives us another another actual queen in light gray there must be a queen here that's that's huge for yellow look because yellow now can't have a queen in either of these or it can't have a queen touching itself so the queen in yellow must be there which allows us to work out where the queen is in blue there's now only one place in the mushroom in the middle there's only one place for a queen there's only one place for a queen in red and then then the queen starts to do their oscillating thing and that'll be a terrible time but um oh <laughs> um but that is how to solve the puzzles if you're um well that's how i solve the puzzles anyway if um if that's helpful so a little video i don't know if it's helpful but what i do know is that uh queens is something i do every day it's a part of my puzzle regimen along with times cryptic crossword the times quick cryptic the times concise wordle strands um what else connections uh there's probably one or two others as well um as well as obviously everything we do on cracking the cryptic so um i i definitely recommend incorporating queens into your into your daily into your daily diet of puzzles it's a good puzzle and thomas all power to your bow my friend See you again for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.